Hello everyone, Jason Meyer here with some Monday morning inspiration. And today we get to look at this spectacular little painting by Rembrandt. Um, this painting is approximately nine by 12. Those aren't the exact dimensions, but it gives you a sense of the scale. It's a very small, but in this small space, he's also illustrating a biblical story of Daniel and the Persian king. Um, but I'm not covering, quote unquote, the subject matter today or what the painting's about or the stories it tells or any of its symbolism. We are going to look at this in terms of paint and what the artist is doing and what the paint is doing. Um, there's plenty of other places you can read up on this painting and find out all sorts of things. But I don't want to read about this painting. I want to look at this painting. And let's see what Rembrandt has got going on. So let's get a little bit disoriented and uh, see what's happening with the values in this painting, just the light and the dark. Okay, so now that we've disoriented ourselves just a little bit, we can see that this is the big finish right here. And if we were to extend that, all of this is the finish. And I'm going to prove that. And when I say finish, I'm talking kind of climax. And that will always, shouldn't say always, but in our system of painting, will always be the light. You'll notice when we go black back into color that you're still going to notice the quote unquote white or lightest paint above even the color. Um, the value is important because it is literally the structure of the painting. See how, see, see how cleanly he, uh, he keeps you going? And notice these notes aren't all the same. We're going to look, but they build up and then they die off and they build up and die off and build up and die off and build up. And those are done. There's one going to die off. Here's two. It's going to die off a little bit. You got a little bit happening there. Die off and then bang. There's the big mother note right there. And then we're not just going to go silent there. And then back up here. And of course we've got this light and then this over here. But this is our preview. This is our show, and then we're going to wrap everything up over here. The design is really beautiful, and it's nice and stable. Do you see there's a basic triangle here for stability? Everything's building up to that. So again, a full view in color. And again, notice as we get in the color, those parts that were dropping off, He's using color to kind of support that, but it's not going to be as much as our lighter stuff. Even over here on the table, we can really notice that. So when we start the painting, as we're viewing it, the left side of the painting, you see how there's nothing to look at over here. We're going to start with almost absolutely nothing. Some slight changes happening here, but we're not sure. We get over here again, very quiet. This is perhaps some of the hardest things to figure out. It's, it's really simple, but you got to know how to look for it. We're going from shadow, from vagueness, and then, ah, oh, I hope you can see that on your light. Here, that vagueness is starting to be lit up. Shadow to the light starting to build before we hit our first light right here. Okay, and see how cleanly you go to the light when there's nothing competing? Boom, boom. Are those the exact same color, the same value? Or is this less and this a little bit more? More. We're going to pause a little bit. Pause and then um, everything right there. So that creates the strong movement you see in the painting, that difference and that order of taking us up and down and clearly from more to less. Then we come to the main note. 
And notice how much more is in this space that was in the initial space. You see how full and active and complete that looks? Where how sparse and almost incomplete this looks? Okay, if this was just as active as our next portion, we would have no reason for our eye to travel to this portion. We have to have a reason for him to go from here to there, from us to go from here to there. Okay, so he's got the big structure and everything, but if we take a closer look at this face, we can see it's nothing but a contour. So that's not gonna hold us. In another language, if we go back to a couple lessons ago, there's no topography. So there's a color spot, but there's no topography. So that's gonna be much less of a hold than a color spot with topography, right? If we take this last little bit off these whites, take some of these darks out, and we're left with the color just like we have here. So this and this are more or less the same other than this being bigger, but this one has more topography than that one. Boom, thus you're there, plus it's got the white, that's in quotes, or the light paint, which also this one does not. There's a few little dots here, but they're not combined together, they're separate. Separate, the white and the color will have its power, but if you put them both together, they're gonna have more power and put them with topography. Okay, I hope that's making sense. Even in the shadows, how is he getting this in front of that? Darker, richer, lighter, grayer and the simple overlap, but if this hand is the same color as this hand, it's gonna be hard to distinguish the two. So our main note, guide off, and this is a brilliant little stroke right here, just this little bit, because if you put your thumb on this part of the painting and you go, this becomes too fast. But that slows you down a little bit, and then he goes, he breaks this movement by having a few things go across that way. So he's slowing the pace of your view. And then as there's nothing to look at, you speed up and then we slow down. We speed up and then, ooh, we gotta take our time for that. And then we're gonna speed past this and, oh, there's some detail there. Okay, but even with the fullness of this portion of the painting, notice really how little, if we take this entire thing from top to bottom and side to side, how little bit of that space this actually covers. What's happening here? Nothing, is that our nothingness? The shadows. Are they a bunch of nothing? How much nothing is right here? So as much as it is about creating topography for them to look at, it's also about creating nothingness so that the topography is more powerful. Again, going from less to more is how you get the eye to travel but we just don't wanna stop right here and that's it. How are we gonna walk him to the door after the party and say goodnight? So there's his hand, the scepter is gonna to point to some of this. But again, do you see how much less this portion of the painting is compared to that? So it's like a, a, a gentle letdown. It's a build up and a letdown. 
Again, the shadow of the table, nothing, no detail, not a lot of contour, not much happening. A little more, nothing, a little more, nothing, more. Right? There's movement. Let's take a look at the highlights on this bowl on top of the table. Remember we said the paint itself has to be interesting? You see how this paint makes it look like we're swirling and moving and dinging and dancing all over this. There's not a lot of detail, but the paint that is there is very descriptive. Boom. Let's hold this in place. So all of our activity is held by our shadow. So even on a 9 by 12, if you realize what you're doing and how paint works and how to adjust it, you can have an absolute masterpiece. All right? So we only talked about the primary light, but the secondary things that are happening in here too are just as astounding. Something you probably didn't even see, you know, of course we've got this guy here, but he's even got a little puppy looking in on this scene. Look at that little guy back there. How brilliant. Remember topography? We talked near to far. So this is the front part of the stairs. That's one step. On top, there's two, there's something interfering, that's three, behind it's four, the cloth is five, the light is six, the shadow is seven, the table leg is eight, behind the table leg nine, we got the dog ten, eleven. So in this nothing, this part of the painting, there's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven steps back into space. Okay, so your concept is how is your light going to move across the canvas? From here up to here, through here, right? the rise and fall of that light, and we employ topography to do that, right? So the light that we talked about, that was gotten with our three values, our one, two, three, the big design is done with our values. And then with light, color, and topography, detail, more to less, the show goes on. So this is an absolutely stunning painting. If you ever get a chance uh, in Southern California at the Getty, make sure to check this little one out. It is a huge surprise. So this is Jason Meyer signing off for this week. Have a good week. Stay inspired and paint, paint, paint.